traders, this is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the Morning Edge webinar. I want to welcome you all back. So we're going to get started with our morning analysis, and uh, let's hope we can find some really nice um, levels to look at, um, you know, for for possible longs and shorts in the market. So, you know, we're going to start off with the euro as we normally do, and um, I, I will say again that um, that it, when we're using the um, MB Desktop Pro, the uh, hourly charts are still, I don't know what the, the problem is, but we're still got that, um, you know, that issue where we're creating double uh, hourly bars, okay, so, I, I, and, I, and I have not uh, gotten any word on the solution or a fix or what's what's going on, so, um, but, you know, nonetheless, um, you know, we can still, we can still look at the charts and, you know, know where the appropriate, you know, um, you know, support and resistance levels are. And we, we have to expect uh, today uh, outsized moves. So, you know, it, um, hold on really quick. Um, Jared, miss him in our chat room. Just put him up. I need to retweet that. Okay, so here's the um, here's the euro dollar, um, and um, uh, you know, looking at the euro, it's obviously capped by this trend line. But we have to imagine that you know, if if the Fed does something, you know, uh, if the Fed does something um, um, crazy, you know, what is going to be the result of of that? Okay, if they, if like, let's say the Fed actually um, is extremely dovish. If the Fed's extremely dovish, we're going to bounce from you know current levels, probably this you know 11060, which is support. Okay, that's been the support that we've been talking about 11065. We're we're basically on it. You know, we're we're heading back to 112. So you have to imagine any move that comes out of this resistance like this, you know, is going to take us back towards 11220. Okay. And again, we're talking outsized moves because this is the Fed. This is a Fed day. It's not like, you know, this is a day that we don't have a whole lot of data. We got a crap load of data coming out, and on top of that, we got the Fed. So, let's imagine some bigger moves today. Let's imagine moves of 100 pips or more. Like we can only hope that that's what's going to happen. Um, uh, but if we if we um, rally, uh, 112.20 is going to be key resistance for the euro. I I, I Really, am not um, uh, super um, uh, enchanted with the euro right now. But I will tell you, if if the euro starts to break higher and we break above like this one eleven thirty, this this um, here, let me grab my pen here. This should be a a decent like you know forty to. 40 to 60 pip opportunity by the time you can get in, you know, like, let's say, you know, we're here, you know, ahead of the FOMC, the FOMC and statement comes out, it seems fairly dovish, you know, the euro starts to rally, you might be able to get in somewhere around here and maybe scalp a, a good, you know, 40 or 50 pip gain right there, all right, that, that to me is possible, all right, now, the other, the other possibility is the Fed is extremely, hawkish or they, let's say they 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 well if they raise rates um, we're going down here so just just uh, I'll, I'll just throw that out there I mean if, if, the, if the Fed raises rates today we're gonna we're gonna be down here within the next 24 hours that we're gonna give all that back okay without a doubt okay all that ECB gains yeah gone um, but if they come out hawkish and it seems like they you know it seems increasingly likely that we're going to get a rate hike in June and hell we might even get one in April um, you know we will come down and probably test the 618 so this will be the 10975 level okay so 10975 that that would be doable okay but if that happens, I'm not really as interested in shorting the euro. There's other things I'd rather do. The Fed's extremely hawkish. I'll probably short the 
Kiwi, and I might even short the Aussie too, and obviously I can always add more Canadian, which we'll talk about here in a bit. All right, let's talk about the cable. The cable you got to be really careful with. Obviously, we have a, the, the annual budget that's coming out in an hour, um, so that could move the cable as it is. Um, the other issue is you got Super Thursday tomorrow with the B, the, the Bank of England. Uh, you got the Bank of England um, rate decision um, tomorrow, which you know could be a big issue too. So um, the one thing I want to talk about the cable. And let's let's delete some of this stuff. We couldn't we couldn't even get a rally yesterday. It's the cables. Remember uh, yesterday we said you know the biggest problem with the cable is we had this false breakout. Okay, that was the, in my opinion, the big issue about the cable, and you can see the pounds just getting creamed. It doesn't even matter. We had we had good economic data today. Didn't even matter. Okay, we, we're we're still. I mean, um, you know, good employment data. They, they don't care. Taking down the pound. Okay, we're approaching this 140.65 level, which is the 618 retracement. But let's imagine the Fed is extremely hawkish. Okay. We, I mean, look at all that selling that's come in. This is almost consistently, and, and there are some green bars in there, but it, it, it really is almost like a series of 10 straight down cow, you know, uh, candles, uh, you know, four-hour candles. I mean, it's just brutal, brutal reversal on the pound. You know, if the Fed comes out any type of hawkish, I mean, we're, we're probably heading down at least to 786, if not all the way down here. You know, obviously, if if the Fed raises rates, we're gonna we're gonna test this low, if not break it. We may not break it just because of the uh, um, you know Bank of England decision tomorrow. But I mean, look at how close we are to this. You know, this is a uh, really key supports down here. I'm gonna write down 140, 140, 50, but really. Uh, there's, I mean, the next support comes down at, oh, I mean, I mean, it's somewhere down here. I mean, you know, I'll, I'll write down 140.50 and one, 130, the 786, which will be 139.65. Um, 139.65, one, we're, we're just, we're, we're, uh, um, we are preparing for mayhem we may not get mayhem today but we have to prepare for it you know so first level support second level support here in the pound now obviously if the fed is extremely dovish the cable will bounce back and uh, then again you know how big of a bounce back are we going to get we got the budget this morning which obviously is going to influence the cable here and then we got you know tomorrow so it's like, you know, how big of a bounce are we going to get? I, I don't know. Um, let's imagine you're on the long side of the pound. I have to honestly admit to you guys, I'm glad I'm not long the cable right now. <laughs> I would be, I'd be throwing my desktop out the window, not just the laptop. I would be throwing the desktop. Um, so... Where... Where would somebody who's if you're if you're along the the cable, where in the hell would you want to get out if you could? You know that's that's the question. It's like okay, I'm long. I said holy crap. Now I'm saying holy crap double time. Uh, if we get a bounce back to like 143, am I going to be happy with that? I mean, you know, would I be happy with a move back to 143 just to get out? I think so. Or maybe this 142.50 would, um, you know, be sufficient. Previous support kind of capped us right there. Previous support over here. You know, 142.50. If you think we're we're at 141 right now, anybody who's long and who's stuck long the cable right now, they'd probably be really happy with that price. So um, it's not great resistance, but again, I'm trying to I'm trying to prepare for mayhem today. Not not necessarily. Um, you know, because th these prices are so close, it's because if we get some outsized moves today, you know, where are we going to find that resistance? Where are we going to find that support on big moves like that? Okay, let's take a look at the um, uh, Swissy. 
Okay, so the Swissy. Now, let's say the Fed raises rates. Okay, I'll tell you, if the Fed raises rates, we're going to spike right back up to parity here. Okay. Let's get rid of some of this stuff. If the Fed raises rates, we are going up to the, here without any problem. Okay, I don't know if we're going to be able to sustain it, but uh, a rally to parity seems very doable. Okay, that's going to be probably peak uh, key resistance on the way up. We are in a range here. Um, support 98 cents. I mean, obviously, on a dovish FOMC, you know, we're coming right back down to 98 cents. Um, it's also, you know, near that 618 that we've been discussing. You know, we yeah, we've been below it a little bit, but still, you know, overall, that 618 is still pretty much holding us. So I'm going to say 98 cents is support, and we're smack dab in the middle of it. Okay, that should probably be pretty good support there. Um, let's go to the yen. So the yen, the yen is stronger at the moment. Uh, BOJ, Corota had um, you know uh, left open the possibility of more stimulus. Here, let me move that on out. It's got to continue to come out here. Okay. Um, the reason why I have that drawn out, guys, if you don't know, because that's the that's the neckline of the head and shoulder pattern. And it, just so you all know, if you you don't know this already, as long as we stay below 115, 50, 116, I'm staying short the dollar yen. I don't care. You know, it may come up in my face a little bit. I still don't care. All right. Overall, I think the dollar yen is going lower, but <clears throat> that doesn't help us for today. For today. Okay, you have to imagine that is resistance for today. That comes in at 115, basically 114.90. Support is 112.60. We happen to be at 113.50. Um, Kuroda had uh, had had basically left the, the the door open for more stimulus, uh, you know, early summer. Okay, uh, and that is, um, and that was, uh, 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 you know, just some rhetoric that, that came out last night, and that's why the dollar yen is, has moved up. You know, we bounced off, obviously, off support yesterday, which is key support uh, that we wrote down yesterday. So let's write that down today, 112.60. That's key support. Resistance is 114, well, let's just write down 115. I could write down 114.90, but it's really 115. That's key resistance. And um, we are still in a bearish trend. Now, we've been really range bound um, since we broke down, but still, you know, overall, you know, the, the dollar yen is trying to move lower towards, you know, 105. All right. One of the other things that you're going to have to watch here if you're trading the yen, watch bonds. Watch the 10 year, watch the 30 year. If the 10 year and the 30 year bond markets start to get really bullish, that's going to weigh on yields. That means the yen is going to come down. So if you see, you, you know, you see the bond, you know, you see here's the 30 years hitting new highs. But if these bonds start hitting new highs, that's going to, that's going to weigh heavily on um, yields, which will weigh heavily on the, the dollar. Okay. The dollar yen is uh, dollar yen tends to be very correlated to to to, to, to yields. Okay. All right, let's go into the Canadian. And and by the way, I am short the dollar yen. My cost average is right here at one thirteen forty six. I've been I, I uh, added to it a little bit yesterday, but my cost average has basically been around one thirteen fifty to one thirteen sixty for the last you know, week and a half or whatever. Here's a Canadian. I am long the dollar Canadian. I sold, uh, I sold a little twice yesterday 
around 134. I think my first sale was at 133.80. My second sale was at like 133.92 yesterday. I sold some here. I sold some again up here. I bought a, I bought some back when we dipped down to like 130.50 yesterday. And um, so I'm still sitting in my position. All right, my cost average just changed a little bit. My cost average now is uh, 132.83. My cost average was at 132 like 50 yesterday, but because I sold some and I bought some back up here, because we do FIFO first in first out, I book profits from stuff that I bought way down here, and so my cost average has moved up a little bit. But here's the thing, all right? The dollar Canadian, as you can see, is right up against resistance. We obviously rejected it yesterday. Let's. Uh, I'm going to redraw that here in a second. Okay. If the Fed is hawkish, the dollar Canadian is going to break this 134. If the Fed is hawkish, what you're going to see is you're going to see commodities like crude oil really come under pressure. You're going to see the dollar rally. And with crude coming under pressure and the dollar rallying, you'd probably get a double whammy effect in the dollar Canadian, which means if we break above 134, we should rally quite sharply. And that would that would provoke me to actually add to my dollar Canadian longs, okay? Now, the flip side is, let's say the Fed is extremely dovish. Well, if they're extremely dovish, we have support right here at 133. Now, it, you'll notice that, and I just had it drawn out, I just removed it so I can draw these out, but now I can show you. Take that low, the spike low, to the high at 134, the 38% retracement is at 133.10. So I'm going to write down that 133 is key support. Because if the Fed is dovish, crude should rally, the dollar should come down, and um, the dollar Canadian could break through that 133. If we break through that 133, um, I'm probably still going to stay in my dollar Canadian as long as it stays above 131.30. Um, you know, but it really starts to um, it really starts to weigh on the idea that the the Canadian um, can go much further higher. Okay, so it all really depends on the Fed today. All right, um, so there's the Canadian, and um, got that range. Let's do the Kiwi really quick. Now this is a currency that I am strongly considering shorting today. Okay, this is a this is a a um, uh, this is a currency that I really would like to short today if the dollar rallies. Okay, let's remove these fibs. Let's remove this. Let's remove this. What you'll notice is this is the trend line, okay? We broke out, we're back testing it, and I'm gonna tell you right now, if we, if the Fed, okay, is hawkish, and we break this support, that is going to be a failed breakout of the Kiwi. Now the Kiwi's got a lot working against it. It's got crappy dairy auction results. It's got an RBNZ that unexpectedly, you know, cut rates and is looking to cut rates even further. The Kiwi's got a lot working against it. So if we break this 6550, we are going to excuse my language. We are going to shite the bed. Okay? If we break that it's, and it's not going to be pretty, I don't think. So, 65 or 65.40, whatever the spike low is here. Let's double check that number. 65.45, 44. So let's just call it 65.50. If we break 65.50, um, I'm probably going to. I, I probably will short some kiwi, 
but I'll probably buy the pound New Zealand. Uh, well, maybe not. I don't know. The pound depends on the budget, and you know, it depends on a lot of things actually regarding the pound. The Euro New Zealand, which I already have a marker in, um, I'm 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 down like 70 pips, and it's a it's a third size position. I'm not even I'm not even paying attention to it. A couple hundred dollars in my account is not going to affect me a whole lot in my Euro New Zealand. But if the but if the Kiwi breaks that 65.50, I am going to probably be aggressively long the Euro New Zealand. I might short the New Zealand yen. Uh, I, I, you know, my, you know, short the Kiwi dollar. I bought, buy some more Aussie New Zealand. I don't know. I'll do a lot. There's a lot of things I can do if the Kiwi breaks that 65.50. But this right here is very important. If we break through that, it could be downright ugly for the Kiwi. And um, and I am excited about it. Death to the Kiwi dollar is all I have to say. Death, death and destruction. No, I just think the Kiwi is trading really heavy. It's very bearish. There's a lot, like I said, there's a lot working against it right now. Um, now, where's resistance? I mean, you know, it, it, because obviously we have to think about how about if the Fed is, you know, extremely dovish, well, Kiwi's going to rally. I mean, you know, the, the commodity currencies are going to rally here. So, you know, could we rally back to you know, to resistance like this, sure, you know, you know, would this be doable, you know, like a rally back here, sure, you know, I, I think that, you know, any rally back ever, up here, I'd probably be interested in selling too, you know, and get a rally back up to this resistance, but um, that's 67.70, that's pretty freaking far away, I mean, it really is, um, This seems more logical. Sixty-seven and a quarter. I'll write that down. Again, I'm just trying to think of uh, sixty-seven. I'm just trying to think of some outsized moves. You know what I mean? That, that, that's that's what I'm trying to think about. All right. When we come back, we're going to do the Aussie dollar index, peso. Um, the Nordic currencies. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Hi, right, traders. This is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the Morning Edge webinar. I want to welcome you all back. Um, so let's finish off these uh, rest of these commodity currencies, um, or rest of these pairs rather. Let's go over to the Aussie. Now the Aussie is kind of dangerous right now. Um, the Aussie is 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 in a situation where we are threatening, and here I'm gonna I'm gonna t I'm gonna delete some of this stuff here. Okay, we are threatening making a lower low, and that's dangerous. The reason why that's so dangerous is because if you look at the Aussie dollar, we closed at a breakout point on the week, right? Previous support, current resistance, we closed breaking out. And um, you know that that Chinese industrial production number came out over the weekend, that kicked us off, right? Knocked us down. Now you can see we've got a little bit of selling coming in. I mean, what if we start hitting lower lows? And that's a problem because you know you combine lower lows with a false breakout, and next thing you know, the Aussie's going to be you know Aussie's in a little bit of trouble. Okay, and so um, you know this it, it, it's 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 you know it's vulnerable now. Here, let's get rid of this. It's vulnerable now. All right, if it does, so that's why a break below uh, seventy four twenty whatever that is twenty five twenty six seventy four twenty five is support. Okay, but there's more support below that. So. Um, the, it, it, let's imagine we do, and then what we might do is we might challenge this, you know, this this channel resistance. That the, the, and by the way, this channel has been holding us up for a while. So coming back and retesting that, doable, very, and especially I, I bet if we draw a fib here, I bet that's around a 38% retracement. 
it's actually a 50% retracement. Okay, so if we break this 74.25, then a move down to 73.50 is extremely doable. Okay, boom. And if you're looking for longs, maybe that's a great place to be on the long side here. Let me move that over just a bit. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to write down 73.50. Point, point 73.50. Okay, if we break 74.25. Now, resistance. Um, you know, resistance now you have to, uh, oops, got rats. I mean, this is 75.30, obviously. Um, then we have 76. I mean, if the Fed is like extremely dovish, you know, do, do we pop back up towards, you know, 75.30 or 76 cents or even 75.50. It's a tough call. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to write down 75.50. I know it's, it's a little bit beyond the 75.30. Okay. But the reason why is I want to give it a little bit more room. I just, I, 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 I think if we, if we do stage a rally up here, here let's like this, we do stage a rally from here, you know, this is obviously it's been a little bit of a struggle area, you know, you can see it right through here. Okay, support, gap, you know, gap fill, resistance. So 75.50 might offer some pretty good resistance on the way back. Okay, um, we're still bullish. Oops, we're still bullish, but you know, the, it's threatened right now. Uh, the, uh, I think the, the the bull case is 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 being the bullish case for this currency right now is uh, is is being threatened. But you know, obviously, everything can change post FOMC. I mean. You know, following the Fed. I mean, these charts that we're looking at can look extremely different. So, but I, but I think that um, that yeah, if you're bullish the Aussie, you're probably being very cautious at this point. I would, I would assume. Okay. All right. Let's go to the um, dollar index. All right. So here's the dollar index. Um, I mean, you notice how we just popped right up into that was the resistance we had yesterday, right? 96.85, I think we wrote down. Went as high as 97. <sighs> I mean, you know, you got to imagine what if, you know, what if, what if the Fed raises rates? I mean, we're going way up here in the next, you know, 24 hours. Yeah, but uh, how about if the Fed's kind of hawkish? You know, where are we going to go? Um, uh, well, support's easy. I, I, I think we can write down support pretty easily. It's right there, right? Here, let's get rid of this. Oops, what was that? I don't want that. No. Disappear. Okay. Um, I didn't even know what that was. Okay, so support is here at uh, you know, roughly 96 cents. Okay. It's going to be key support. Um, resistance, though. It's really um, hard to judge where resistance is going to be. You know, you, you think of something like this. You 
you know, we could rally all the way up here, but I'm, I'm going to write down 97.50 um, or 97.40. It's not really great resistance, um, but yeah, you, again, we're just trying to anticipate, you know, some big moves here. I'm just going to keep it in a range. Okay. Let's go to the peso. Okay, so here's this is going to be a great gauge of risk aversion and risk appetite. The peso. You guys know this, right? It's going to be very easy. If you if you guys want to know where you guys want to know where the stock market's going to go, you know, or if if we got risk aversion or risk appetite, it's pretty easy. Because if we break above 18 in the peso, you know the market has gone risk off. It's plain and simple. It's really, you know, this is, you know, if for those of you that trade equities and you're going, okay, well, you know, how am I going to know if the if, how the how the stock market's reacting? Um, the, note the the peso. If the peso breaks above 18, uh, we're finally going to get that rally, which you know, I'm still still I still have open orders to sell the U.S. dollar Mexican peso at 1850. By the way, they're still on my board. I, I they're good to cancel. Let me see. Yep. I still have them there, 1855 actually. So you know, if we break above 18, whew, you know, we should get a rally. Okay. The flip side is, um, the flip side is, if the stock market is, you know, really rallying aggressively because you have a super dovish Fed. Now we're going to come down here to you know this 1755, uh, 1750 support. Okay. So if you want to know how the stock market's going to react, just look at the peso. All right, that that'll give you um, a pretty good gauge of what's happening. Here's the Norwegian krona right up against resistance. I, you know. I don't know what to do with the Norwegian Krona. The Norwegian Krona is actually, I believe it's a great short as long as crude rallies. It, crude had, I, I, I was really interested in the Norwegian Krona at the time on Friday because I thought crude could break above 40 bucks. But if it's not going to break above 40 bucks, I mean, you know, the, the US dollar Norwegian Krona could, you know, bounce back. Now we do have the Norges Central Bank. We have the Norwegian Central Bank on Thursday. They are expected to uh, cut rates tomorrow. It'll be tomorrow morning, so less than 24 hours from now. Um, I, I think we got to leave the U.S. dollar Norwegian Krona off the board. Between the FOMC today, the the, the Norwegian Central Bank tomorrow morning, there, there's no real reason to deal with this. And everybody knows that a rate cut is coming, so it's like, do you buy the Norwegian Krona just because you know it's coming, you know, and 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 sell the U.S. dollar? Norwegian Krona. I mean, to me that makes sense, uh, but um, you know, did you know it's it? it I, I I think we leave it off our board till tomorrow. Okay, figure out what we're going to do with it tomorrow. U.S. dollar Swedish Krona. Now this is a threat. Uh, eight, I'm going to write down eight thirty. Um, if the dollar comes under pressure today, we break through eight point three zero zero. That is going to be very bearish for the U.S. dollar Swedish krona. I'll go back and write down that 840 is resistance, just because that's like the closest resistance we can find here. But I, I, I do want to state that if we do break 830, um, you should keep this on your radar, especially if we see dollar weakness today. Okay, 840 is resistance. It's not great resistance. It's just resistance. We are in a range. But threatening to move to the lower end of our range. I want to keep this one on the radar just in case the dollar does break down. Okay. All right. So your bias chart is done. We're finished. We're ready. Uh, hope you guys are ready or better prepared than you were, you know, 40 minutes ago. Chrysos writes in.